Okay, so let's address the elephant in the room. Mm. I don't know how I got it, but let's get started. Welcome back to a new video. My name is Miriam Barajas and welcome. <laughs> if you are a new viewer, hello, welcome. My name is Miriam. I like to do content with, you know, creating content for vlogs, for school, because I work in the school and just life overall. Obviously, I'm getting started, but I hope you guys stick around and see my growth. And in this week's video, we're going to talk about back to school season when 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 it's the most wonderful time of the year. it's that time of year again you guys have no idea how much i <laughs> love school and i think it's very unhealthy because it comes with trauma but i enjoy being in a school environment i feel like because i've been in a school environment for so long it's much more easier for me to just continue it and i remember for a very young age i've always said that i wanted to become a teacher and all that so the fact that i for those who don't know i'm a substitute teacher for the meantime be my second year teaching and with back to school season right around the corner i just wanted to give you guys a little update or kind of the data and information that i found for my first year and hopefully this video helps out other teachers or other educators you know that are starting now or who like school content but let's get started so as mentioned we're going to be talking about how my school year went as my first year as a substitute teacher i am how old am i i'm 24 years old believe it or not but i've been in education from the age of 20 so i've been in education for about four years now the first three years of my career, I was a paraprofessional for students with special needs, and I completely love that job. I love it, I miss it, but as I became a member of this community, I had my eyes open to how messed up our you know, system is, no matter the state. But once I came to my state of Wisconsin, because I used to work in Illinois, but once I came to my state of Wisconsin, the system is a little bit better, but my experience as a sub did, um, you know, was different depending on the school. And we'll get into it in this video, but here's how my year looked. My year, my, my year at a glance, I, <laughs> I did this PowerPoint as the year was going, like as the school year was going by, just so I can update it and, you know, a lot of statistics and all that. But I do have a video where I explain my position and the different positions that my school district offers. And just for privacy reasons, I don't want to go into what school district I go into just yet. But I can give you a lot of information without giving you a lot of my information. Let's get started even though I've already said that like three times already what are five things that I learned this year or this past school year so one thing that I've learned this year is always be prepared being prepared makes or breaks your day and I feel like setting a routine for yourself as an adult and as an educator is very important but in this situation as a substitute teacher being prepared for me meant knowing our emergency contacts knowing you know our emergency procedures for fire drills for <laughs> um tornado drills for unfortunately um active shooter drills and then also knowing where our nearest exit was and that's something that a lot of people don't talk about and i feel like a lot of substitute teachers take with amazing grace if you will is that as a substitute teacher for the most part, I've never been into your school. So I have to know all this information and be prepared with all of this information the minute I walk in. And I knew and I figured out, you know, the fastest way to, you know, you know, the nearest exit and all this stuff. Because one is common sense. One, I've been a student in this school district, so it's not that hard to like keep up. But being prepared 
for the safety of my students was my main priority and you know that was something that I learned a lot and to emphasize this year so yeah <laughs> number two make sure you know the school's schedule and their routine I feel like this was very important to set a very good um, step into the right direction for the school day because a lot of the kids and this is so unfortunate to say but a lot of the kids hated the fact that they had a sub because either one of two things one <laughs> they were really behind and the kids knew it and you know it would be another day behind two they really liked their teacher or three they just really didn't like school and you have no idea how many middle schools I've entered where I've been cursed out just because their teacher wasn't there and I was the sub and they didn't even know me like that so but when it comes to like knowing their routine and their schedule you want to know you know for elementary school what's their recess time for all of all of the schools when is lunch time in some middle schools do I have to pick them up you know do I have to drop them off to lunch in elementary school same thing you know where's you know the playground because some schools have you know big kid playgrounds some schools have little kid playgrounds when is snack time do they have a snack time if you don't have snacks <laughs> um where can i get more snacks what what time are the electives do i drop you off to the electives where i pick you up from each elective all this information i keep <laughs> in a separate document and you know obviously this school year or this past school year and this upcoming school year i'm going to obviously update that information as i go through each school again but that is the information that i found very important every time i took a position because it really made it easier for me to navigate my day and honestly take the assignment overall because let's say if I was having like a really bad day at home allegedly and don't take you know my my word for it but sometimes it is easier to suffer high school and middle school because the teacher had already done their work and posted everything on Google Classroom so that's considered like an easy day but for elementary school you know if I had a bad day at home I don't want to be you know overstimulated and overtouched by you know younger students so it really helped me navigate and plan my time accordingly and knowing that information is just useful just for the next assignment ahead and you know how that school works so that's what I learned you know what I mean moving on for number three another thing that I learned this year is <laughs> not all school entrances are the same and I had to learn that the hard way but that's because depending on the school they have you come a half hour to like 10 minutes before school actually starts and I just made sure that I gave myself enough time just to find the entrance because not all entrances are the same I've had some entrances where yes it's in front of the building and it has the label number one on it so that's the entrance of the school I've had some you know sometimes I would have to enter through you know a different door in the school I know that one of the schools I had to go to it was on the side of the school so they had parking in the front but you had to you know obviously walk toward like the side of the school to enter and just give yourself as a substitute teacher as an educator enough time to get to your school just so you know one the entrance two you know how your day is gonna look and three find your nearest ex <laughs> exit number four this was more something that i still have to learn for this upcoming school year and it's don't take everything the students say to heart especially if it really hurts you because they just want a reaction from you and honestly i cherish this job a lot because again it's been a dream to be a teacher for me given everything that i know now and like how dysfunctional it is i still want to be a part of you know this amazing community of teaching you know <laughs> the next generation and i had a lot of students and you can probably see in you know previous vlogs where they're talking about my body um sometimes they were talking about the way i spoke or the way i looked or even the water that i drank and even the way I did my job, I have so many stories where students were coming at my throat and I had no other option but to take it. 
And if you know me, you know that I have a very short temper and I don't tolerate that, but because I'm working with students and I have to be professional in a professional setting, I just had to take the yelling and all that and cry about it later. <laughs> Cause I'm not gonna front. I did cry a lot this past school year cause I took everything to the heart. But now that I've um, met a lot of these kids throughout the school year, I'm much more prepared to handle their rude comments as unfortunate as it sounds and don't get me wrong this whole summer i've been on edge because i've met so many kids and they probably remember me for being you know a certain type of sub because sometimes we had good days and obviously sometimes we had bad days and i'm just scared for some of them to approach me and try to like do something and i just <laughs> i've been on edge every time i've gone to the gym every time i go out like oof girl on edge all the time but moving on to our last one make sure you bring stuff to entertain not only yourself but the students too this comes obviously from experience from like the younger kid well from all grades honestly i <laughs> and this was a part of my training too but i didn't take it to heart because i i love being on the little computer so it really isn't hard to entertain me it is now because my work computer and the school computers are totally different but it was hard for me to keep some of our students entertained because you know a lot of the teachers didn't leave enough work or you know a lot of these kids are really smart for their grade or they're really strong in a certain subject so it was really hard to make sure that everyone was entertained and educating or like not educated educated and learning all the time and reading can go so long because to read the same five books can go so far and I know from experience obviously so you know I feel like this school year I'm gonna bring worksheets for depending on the grade you know word searches one thing that I really love is Sudoku so hopefully I can spread that love around the school district and just make it educational and make it fun I remember that we watched a lot of YouTube documentaries I remember that we did a lot of like videos for elementary school they're called brain breaks for everybody else it's just videos and honestly um a lot of the middle schools they love playing board games so i just wanted to keep it like that and keep it super chill because i feel like low-key reflecting on my school year i took everything very much to heart and i need to learn how to chill like yes my job is very important but sometimes we just need a little break from our teachers because I've heard stories from all different kinds of students where their teacher wasn't there every day and they had to make up for it. So once they told me that, you know, I would obviously step up and, you know, teach them a good lesson in chemistry or in math. But in other times, you know, their teacher would have them <laughs> burnt out. And I'm like, you know what, like, take your time finishing the assignment. Like, just make sure you have it done before your teacher comes back and we should be good and i kind of want to be more chill because i don't want to take everything to heart this year i really don't it really messed with my mental health and how i viewed myself and i don't want to cry so much <laughs> i had to come home crying so much during my lunch <laughs> to my boyfriend and to let people who are younger than me get to me it's funny but like in the moment it's just very hard to like work through and I think, yeah, those are the five things that I learned this year. So we're gonna move on and we're gonna talk about how many, like the statistics of it, because I love history, but I also love math. <laughs> Weird combination, of course, but that's just who I am. And let's go, let's, let's just go to the st statistics. How many schools did I go to? So in my school district, I try to count as much as I could and kind of, get a concrete number but there's about 40 schools in our school district and i went to 26 of that 40. 13 of them were elementary school five of them were middle school three of them were high school and then the other five were a choice or a specialized school so for the elementary school i went to almost all of them except for obviously a select few for high school i went to basically all of them for the middle school, I went to all of them. The specialty schools, I didn't reach a lot of them because obviously I wasn't assigned to that school. 
and that's pretty much it i mean that, that's pretty much my excuse because i wasn't assigned and sometimes those specific schools didn't have um a lot of openings or a lot of assignments so yeah i went i went to a lot of schools if you really think about it for the couple months that were in school 26 schools and mind you i went to a school on like a different school almost every day so i probably did like five different schools in a week or you know four different schools in a week and i would have to change my personality every day so monday elementary you know tuesday middle wednesday middle <laughs> thursday high school and then like you know friday elementary like i i had to change my personality a lot and not that it's hard but sometimes it could be a little draining depending on the school and their reputation and the class and all the information that i learned it could be a lot but it was fun okay so let's get into the nitty-gritty what school level did i like teaching most high school obviously and i feel like i because i've had so many people ask me why i love teaching high school so much i like teaching high school the most because i feel like i can relate to them the most in a way because i'm still <laughs> i'm still young i'm still hip well in all honesty i love teaching high school because one there's more of a broad you know perspective for me to teach um, a lot more liberty of what I can teach and again I feel like I can have mature conversations and honestly as the older sibling in my household I feel like I can guide these students a different way than let's say their parents or anyone else can because I had a lot of you know good relationships with high school students and sometimes middle school students as well with you know stuff that was going on at home or i just had a different perspective and i feel like i'm very personable and i know i kind of shouldn't be because i'm a professional and i'm an adult but being someone that a student can rely on you know is important and you know having that intimate relationship get your mind of, out of the gutter but having that intimate relationship with a student can make or break a student's life and you know i'm just here for the history and because <laughs> that's you know what i would love to teach one day in high school i'm here for the history and you know for making sure that my students are on track to live a life that they're proud of that they did the best that they could every single day and if they didn't they eventually did because you know I was a good teacher or someone else was a good teacher helping them get to the path that they deserve to be on hire me now. <laughs> what were some fun days and treats that I were that I was able to experience I had a lot and I feel like I want to go into more detail about this and I want to talk to my supervisor about this because substitutes want to be just as involved <laughs> as you know students and teachers do and because i was a district sub i didn't feel like i had a home i know the school district was my home but like i didn't and you know the high school that i was working with at the end of the school year which was my high school i know that i had a home but at the same time it felt like i didn't didn't have a home because there would be days where everyone was in pajamas and then <laughs> i was in professional attire because I didn't know it was pajama day or it was homecoming week and everyone was like in this theme and I was in professional attire because I didn't know it was homecoming week. So stuff like that. I feel like I want to talk to my supervisor to set up a plan just so other substitutes can get involved. But obviously some of the days that I've experienced were really fun and here are the different days that I did. I was able to participate, well, I didn't participate per se, but I was able to experience a homecoming assembly for one of the high schools. So I was able to t go to that assembly and those schedules are so hard to follow, but I was able to make it through, but I was able to go through one homecoming assembly. There's this thing for elementary school called Dot Day. I didn't read the story, so I don't know what it's about. All I know that you had to wear a lot of dots on, on that day. We were able to eat ice cream and it's in the beginning of the school year for some schools, I think. For one of the middle schools, they have a social dance. I was able to go, but because I was a um, special ed teacher that day, I stayed back with some of my students 
because some of them didn't want to get overstimulated or that just wasn't their scene so i stayed behind with them and we played tic-tac-toe i helped them with their homework but i did you know experience some of the festivities of the social so i didn't feel too left out another thing that i was able to experience was a play preview so the same school where i was able to go to homecoming to the homecoming assembly they also have a brand new theater and they gave us a little preview of their musical that they were doing and it was for mean girls so we just saw i think the first act and i'm so mad that i didn't go to go see like the rest of it because i just didn't handle my time correctly but it was it was fun it was interesting it was super loud i would give you that it was really really loud so they had to have like have to handle the volume i gotta bring my little um ear plugs there you go <laughs> another thing um a little treat that i got was a gift bag this middle school was the only middle school to give me a gift bag just for subbing and okay let me give some background for this school this middle school is known to be one of the rougher schools to like sub for but from what i've seen this past school year and it was you know in a positive manner some of them did you know have there are some students who refuse to you know be that good student and improve but most of the school i kid you not improved drastically in such a great manner that i had no problem going to this school because i had nothing but positive experiences with them and i had nothing but you know positive relationships with a lot of the kids and yes they're like the bad school but they improved so much and the fact that i was able to get gift <laughs> bags from them every time i went i was low-key little excited to go every time because it was a granola bar and you can see one of i think it was like the vlog for my sister's um birthday um they gave me a granola bar a bag of goldfish a water bottle and a thank you note that alone made my whole day and i can't wait to see them next year because they would advocate for me and they would make sure that i felt respected in their school Ugh. I can't believe they're known as a bad school. They 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 are improving. I'll give you that. <laughs> With that being said, a lot of the other schools, I was able to get a lot of like gifts and like food. Um, for one of the parent teacher conferences that I helped out, um, they got CFA. I was doing Lent during that time, but they got CFA. Chick-fil-A. For my high school that I worked with, I was able to get a little staff sweater and i'm really excited because i have my student sweaters from my high school so now that i have a sweater that says staff i'm a little proud it's a little cheesy but i'm proud that i was able to do that for teacher appreciation week we got a pack of gum it was from one of the high schools it was a little tacky and i felt a little underappreciated <laughs> for that pack of gum but a pack of gum is a pack of gum am i right and then i was able to go on one field trip and i feel like that's why i also want to become a teacher to go on all the field trips but i was able to go on this one specific field trip because i was subbing for a teacher that was on maternity leave and i was the sub to the sub and we were able to go see charlie and the chocolate factory at the same high school for homecoming and mean girls i i went to this high school a lot but in this case i was at elementary because i was subbing for kinder we went to go see this at the high school it was fun again very loud and very interesting to say the least to teach students how to be an audience member of course and it was all right i had a good time so those were all the fun treats and days that we did and now we're gonna go through our memorable moment memorable moments where i can give you guys a little bit more tea about what happened and just so you see why I be crying all the time, bro. <laughs> okay, so a memorable moment was getting yelled at by the kids. I remember this one specific instance where it really tested me as a person because I don't like getting yelled at at all. I have a really strong personality where I demand respect and it was really hard for me to experience so much disrespect 
because I don't tolerate it in my personal life but again because I'm in a professional setting and I have to be a leader I had to kind of tolerate this from like younger people which is really unfortunate but this is what happened <clears throat> I was subbing for art and all they had to do <laughs> their assignment for this day and for the whole week from what I heard was to draw a picture that's all they had to do was free draw and the teacher was very adamant with having students sit in their proper seating chart seat and to not walk around because it can cause a distraction and a lot of these kids had a lot of beef with each other so in order to prevent fights and whatnot sit in your own seat sit the, sit in the seat that you're assigned to and just sit there and this is where i had this group of students and it wasn't a lot which made it a lot more frustrating because it wasn't a lot of students i think it was about like 10 students and there was this one girl let's call her mary mary kept standing up and she kept going to this one table with her with her friends and I had to tell her, hey, can you please have a seat? You know, we're trying to like color right now. Right now is not a good time like to stand up. Please have a seat. I told her that about three times. And you know, by the fourth time I stood up to have a conversation. Ooh. <sighs> okay, so I stood up to have a conversation with her and I was like, look, Mary. And she turns around, gets in my face and yells, I'm gonna fucking sit all right. Oh my. She yelled so loud, right? That I was in shock for a couple seconds and I I wanted to do it right back. But I refrained from doing it because kids have their phones and all that stuff and I don't want to lose my job. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna call the dean. <laughs> because the teacher said specifically that if I had to ask him three times, to call the dean right away but oh because i didn't want to do that because they because a lot of kids weren't standing up that often it was just her throughout the whole day i called the dean and she got taken out and everything and one thing that i found very frustrating is that there was an actual staff member she was there for obviously like the special needs students that were taking that art class but the fact that she didn't support me or say anything really upset me because I know in a way that it's not your job but like I'm not from this school or I haven't subbed you know long enough I don't know I didn't feel supported by her but I did feel supported by the Dean so that's one more one memorable moment of <laughs> not losing my chit so another positive memorable moment was um, the school that I'm telling you where I got the two gift bags uh, they are a big minority school a lot of you know african-american students and hispanic students and this one is memorable to me because it made me feel proud about what i was doing and it gave me that reassurance that i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing and i remember that they were coming into the class and a lot a lot of hispanic students were in this class they were so happy to see one of them <laughs> be the leader of the class and it made me feel so happy and proud to be that 10% of Latino educators because representation matters and right then and there seeing it on their face really showed that I matter or they matter and the fact that I'm there to represent them meant a whole lot to both of us. So that was a really memorable memorable moment especially because i'm bilingual so they just felt that much more like confident and comfortable and just happy overall to have one of them you know be a leader another memorable moment that i had was a lot of high school students getting angry at me for not letting them make their ramen right after like a day after they had a threat to their school so let me explain so it was i think the beginning of the school year still it was around like november october ish i actually had this outfit on oddly enough <laughs> for that school day and i probably had the same hair doing everything but i remember for sure that i had the same exact this same shirt i wore that day 
So on Thursday, my high school and the high school that I had to sub for the next day had a threat. And they there was like it, this whole thing. I didn't hear about it because I think I was subbing either elementary school or middle school. So I didn't hear anything about it until my dad texted me about it. And obviously I looked it up for myself. And so for the next day, you know, we had a lot of police presence and there is a lot of, you know, information and all this stuff. And this is where the whole sub need to be more involved comes in. There was an email sent out to the high school where the library wasn't open because it was being used for counseling and for therapy for, pe for students to talk about their feelings about the threat. I didn't know about it and I got yelled at in a way for not knowing about it so a lot of the students you know i was subbing for home ec and a lot of the students you know were taking a quiz or uh finishing their work for that quarter i think yeah it was for the quarter because we were end of like quarter one and a lot of them were taking tests so for the students who were working on their quarter work as to go to the library, I obviously like gave them permission and they went and then they got sent back and I got a call saying, you're supposed to know. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I just, I'm just subbing. Like, I didn't know. And they're like, oh, okay. Just know for next time. And I'm like, okay, sorry. And they started, you know, coming up to me and they're like, hey, um, my biggest pet peeve. Our teacher said that we were going to make ramen today, so can we go next door to go make it? And I hate, that is my biggest pet peeve. My teacher said, our teacher, your teacher said that she would have told me, but I told them, I'm like, unfortunately, because of what happened yesterday, and your teacher not giving me explicit, you know, direction or permission to use the kitchen, you guys can make your ramen. Tell me why these high schoolers got so freaking mad at me for not letting me use their kitchen, for not letting them use their kitchen to make ramen. You guys just had a threat yesterday. And if I don't know where you are, I am liable for you guys. Like, what part don't you guys understand about that? So I got a lot of new faces throughout the day because I wouldn't let them use the kitchen for their ramen and I got a lot more mean faces because a lot of the kids were using you know we're taking a test and their teacher would never let them take it was a lot of complaining not a lot of accountability but with that being said <laughs> let's keep moving on to our next segment so what are some things that I would change for this year this feels like a whole interview but I hope you guys are finding it entertaining and informational because i learned a lot and i'm really passionate about my job and i'm really excited to go back this year so that's why i'm doing this video and not only that just to see my progress as an educator and you know to go back and reflect on this the next end of the school year that's why i'm doing this video so some things i would change this school year are the following so schools the school district that i work for they are really big on the usage of phones and I feel like for a certain grade, I'm not going to be too worried about it because in all reality, it is up to them to make a decision on their education. And you can kind of guess which grade level I'm talking about. But I can't force a lot of these students to do their work if they don't want to. And if they just want to be on their phone, that's what they're going to end up doing. And, you know, I'll just make a note of it for their teacher and, you know, keep it going because... I am not going to stress myself for their education, you know, because I'm just there for a day, not for the whole school year. And if they don't care about their education, then they don't care. And honestly, that's not my problem. So that's my statement on that. That's that on that. Um, another thing, I probably want to focus on doing other things rather than just staying on the computer. In a perfect world, I would love to edit my videos at work, especially at the middle school and high school level, because again, it could be considered as easy days depending on the school and how much I have to interact with the students. But of course, I have a job to do. And you know, sometimes it's helping them via the computer with their assignments 
or not doing anything at all and just kind of watch them and you know help them whenever they need it and my glasses that i have now don't have like that blue light feature and i think i'm gonna get it for the next time i do get glasses because i don't want to strain my eyes anymore than i have to and you know i want to be reading a lot more and i just want to be dedicated to kind of like my potential studies in history so yeah i want to focus on you know reading doing sudoku making my brain work because sometimes <laughs> i can organize my life for so long you have no idea how many google like docs i have for paying out my debts for um cleaning lists for the like i need to do something more than just that honestly so that's what i'm gonna work on <laughs> for this upcoming school year another thing that i want to improve on is making sure that each class is productive as it can be, no matter what it means to that class. I want to have a full convo with them in the beginning of each class and be like, okay, <clears throat> I want to make sure that this day is productive as it can be, not only for it to reflect good on me, but to make sure that the students are in a good standing with their teacher and with their work, because I feel like a lot of students that put a on for having a sub and they think they can lack and even if I do let them I want to make sure that those students who are really dedicated to their studies have that kind of support from me because I felt like I focused too much on the on the bad kids or disruptive kids and not enough time on like the good kids who are actually dedicated to their studies so I feel like that's something I really want to emphasize this school year. This might be a little bit of a hard one, but <laughs> something I'll probably change this year is less movies, especially because I see I use these movies as a last resort option, but I feel like more tech talks or more educational videos, um, especially with social emotional videos would be a great help because one thing that I did find throughout all the schools, no matter the grade level, is that they were really into social emotional learning this school year. And I feel like because of COVID and because, you know, us integrating back into like, back to school and all that stuff, I feel like if I were to show more videos like that, it could help students be more in tune with their feelings or, you know, journaling and all that stuff. If there's a way that I can help them open up and be more emotionally aware, I feel like I've done my job because you have no idea how many threats I've heard from students to other students. Another thing that I want to focus on and I want to change is how I use my prep periods, um, especially because I am working my way towards getting back to getting my bachelor's. I want to make sure that I'm utilizing my time the best way possible because allegedly during my prep periods, depending on the school, I, I pop out. So whatever that means to you, that's probably what I mean. But I would pop out and I would come back eventually. <laughs> um, enough time for them to not notice that I didn't pop out. But I, I just want to make sure that I'm using, utilizing that time efficiently and effectively, especially for the students. Also, something that I want to work hard on is calling teachers by their first name. It might not seem like a big deal, but again, from being a student for so long and calling teachers by their last name, do you know how awkward it is for me to call my former teachers by their first name? What do you mean your name's... <laughs> for an example, what do you mean your name is Jan? I don't know Jan, I know Miss Smith. Like, it's just an awkward, awkward, awkward time for me like even as a paraprofessional i called one of my friends char miss fishman i kid you not the whole school year because i could not gain the confidence to call her char now i can obviously because we're like close and whatnot but <laughs> my friend and i would not stop calling miss fishman miss fishman because we were too shy to call her char Josie, I was able to call Josie Josie because she went by Miss Josie, so it was easier. And I went by Miss Miriam, so it was easier for them to call me by my name. But I see you, Char. Just know that's why I didn't call you by your name because I was too embarrassed to say Char. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty much what I have from this video. I hope you guys found this entertaining and gave you guys more insight of how 
my job is <laughs> i feel like educators get a lot of shit for saying shit for being honest and upfront and no matter how discreet and how private i can keep this there's always going to be someone who's going to snitch on me and tell me that what i said was inappropriate but it's whatever honestly a few other things that i want to talk about is honestly just just to make this known i love my job and i in a way i'm not scared to lose my job because there's always more out there but i just wanted to make it known that yeah throughout this video i probably did complain and set a tone where it might look, had looked like that i don't like educating but i love educating i know take what i say with a grain of salt because it may seem that i would leave the schools for a long time and whatnot but i took my job very serious and i have been rewarded and you know obviously very i i have a good reputation with my school district and i really want that to you know remain the same for this upcoming school year because i took my job seriously i know that i love working with high schoolers but i did every single grade with passion and with you know great respect and responsibility which is why i have such a good reputation and just take these experiences <laughs> just make it known that each story are months and assignments apart they're not all the same day or the same week there are months in between and like normal people we have good days and we have bad days and for some reason per use the bad days or like the bad things are always you know in the back of your mind all the time rather than the good ones and i feel like with this upcoming school year i want to make sure each day is a good day no matter how you know the school day goes but i'm excited for this upcoming school year i'm excited to see some of my kids again and i'm excited to you know guide a new um grade level because i was fortunate enough to work with a lot of high schoolers who are graduating and going to college and i those students like those are my sweet spot because as a first gen um latina <laughs> student i remember being lost and just to be that guiding you know person for someone means a lot because you feel alone all the time and just having a mentor you know being there for you means a lot more and it could take you to the right you know direction and lead you to your greatest potential and i don't want people to misconstrue my love of guiding with getting you know positive affirmation or you know no hago por la atención or to like rub my ego i do it because i genuinely care about my students and i you know genuinely want them to succeed and you know if i create relationships where you know we are i am mentoring them into a different like grade level and everything so be it but you know my work comes first and like the relationships come after and i take everything very serious and i'm really dedicated to my career as a substitute teacher potential teacher i i just want to do a good job and i hope <laughs> this reflected obviously i'm very goofy and i'm very you know outgoing and i i just talk the way i talk but i take my job very serious and i hope you guys get that through your through your skull i am very serious and it's really hard for me to show how serious i am because i can't bring the cameras into the school building and just because you see me doing tiktoks it's during my it's during my prep period okay so now that we got that out in the clear my name is miriam barajas thank you so much for watching another video don't forget to like comment share and subscribe uh leave any comments below uh with any questions that you might have about my teaching or if you guys want more stories or story times about you know some of these memorable moments because i have a lot that i can remember 
and a lot of them I've, supp <laughs> I've suppressed but I love my job please don't get me fired and I can't wait to see you guys in another video bye como las um, <laughs> como la trámite señor <laughs>